so you know I like a bit of etymology around here. Recently, I found myself wondering about the station names, and specifically the big terminal stations in London. They're a curious bunch when you think about it. One's named after a queen, there's two crosses, a couple of saints, some monks, and before I began this video I had no idea what Paddington was named after, so I thought I'd do a silly little video diving briefly into the history of the names of the London Termini. We're going to go in order of opening. I'm not going to cover underground termini or closed termini, although if you like this one maybe they'll be in a future video. So, the first terminus in London, or at least the first one that's still open, is London Bridge. London Bridge is obviously named after London Bridge, which was more or less the reason for the existence of London. The Romans built a bridge here and built a port around it. The bridge and its successors have a long and eventful history, but the version of it that was in place when the station was opened in 1836 is now in Arizona, at Lake Havasu. It was only five years old when the station was built. Do not get confused about which bridge you're visiting, as Oyster cards are not valid at Lake Havasu. The second is Euston, which opened in 1837. Euston takes its name from Euston Square, which of course also has a tube station named after it. The Square takes its name from its landlords, the Fitzroys, who were, among other things, the Earls of Euston. The Northern Line Charing Cross branch platforms are decorated with an abstract version of their coat of arms. The Fitzroys also gave their name to the Fitzroy Tavern, and the Fitzroy Tavern gave its name to Fitzrovia. Paddington opened in 1838. Now this is a truly ancient name. We think it probably originates with the Anglo-Saxons, and means the settlement of Padder's people. We don't know who Padder was, but my autocorrect keeps trying to change it to Panda, so I guess that's another bear connection. Fenchurch Street arrived on the scene in 1841, and its name may be even more ancient than Paddington. The most obvious possibility is that the ground around here was boggy, literally Fen Church. But an older possibility comes from the fact that the Romans had a hay market around here. The Latin for hay was Fenum. Now as for the church part, we just don't know. There are a number of churches in the area, and it's not clear which one was the actual Fen or Fenum church. Waterloo Station came along in 1848, and it's named after Waterloo Bridge. In fact, the station was originally named Waterloo Bridge. The bridge, in turn, was named after the Battle of Waterloo, which was named after the town in Belgium where the battle took place. The area around the station itself has come to be known as Waterloo, having previously been called Lambeth Marsh. 1852 brought King's Cross. The area used to be known as Battle Bridge, but following the death of King George IV, a memorial to the deceased monarch was put up in the middle of the road junction. However, because said monarch was not the most popular, the resulting memorial was tacky, ugly and cheap. It was soon pulled down, but not before it had given the junction a new name. Next up is Victoria, which was opened in 1860. Well, actually it was two stations, one belonging to the London Brighton and South Coast Railway, and the other belonging to the London Chatham and Dover Railway. But that's another story. The station takes its name from Victoria Street, which was built in 1851 as part of a programme of general improvement works in the area. If, by general improvement, you mean kick out all the poor people and build expensive stuff here. The street was named after Queen Victoria, but you probably figured that out. Charing Cross opened in 1864. It's named after a monument that no longer exists, although a replica of it stands in front of the station. Following the death of Queen Eleanor, her grief-stricken husband, King Edward I, had crosses erected in all the places where her body rested en route to her funeral. This was the final resting place before Westminster, where the funeral took place. The Northern Line platforms of the Tube Station bear a mural depicting the cross under construction. As for the Charing part, it probably comes from the Old English word Chieran, which means turning. So the name literally means turning cross, which is what happens to me when my train is cancelled. I debated whether to include Moorgate, given that these days it's only the terminus for the Northern City Line and the old Thameslink platforms are abandoned. 
But you know what? It's not Moorgate's fault that it's not as grand as it used to be. Moorgate came online, as it were, in 1865. In the City of London, the gate suffix usually represents a gate in the old Roman city walls. It's quite literal in this case. The gate led out onto the moors, the area otherwise known as Moor Fields. The 1860s seem to have been something of a boom time for station construction in London because 1866 gave us Cannon Street. The name has nothing to do with cannons. The street that the station was named after was named Candlewrythe Street and later Candlewick Street, which may clue you in that it was in fact named after candle makers. And at some point, for whatever reason, that got corrupted to Cannon Street, and that's where we are today. Arriving in 1868, St Pancras. This takes its name from the parish where it was located, which in turn was named after St Pancras Old Church, which in turn was named after St Pancras, a Roman martyr. How old the Old Church is is unknown, but there may have been a place of Christian worship here dating back to the 4th century. Liverpool Street missed the 1860s boom, arriving in 1874. This street used to be called Old Bethlehem, after the Priory of the New Order of Our Lady of Bethlehem. The Priory is better known for its later function as a hospital for the mentally ill when it was better known as Bedlam. Mental health care being even worse then than it is now, Bedlam became a synonym for a noisy or chaotic situation. When it came to gentrify the area in the 1820s, it was decided that the rebuilt street should be named after Lord Liverpool. Liverpool was Prime Minister from 1812 to 1827, and the street was completed in 1829. Then there's Blackfriars, which opened in 1886. Although it wasn't called Blackfriars back then, it was called St Paul's, after the cathedral. It was only in 1937 that it was renamed to Blackfriars to avoid confusion with the Central Line station. The Black Friars were an order of monks founded in 1221 and lasted until they were dissolved under Henry VIII, not literally. But they were a prestigious order, so they endured as a place name long after their order was defunct. The late comer is Marlebon, or Marilabon, or however you want to pronounce it. I've heard many arguments about how it should be pronounced, and they're about as interesting as eating a bag of raw oatmeal. Anyway, the station was opened in 1899 and takes its name from St. Mary's Church. St. Mary's sat by the Tyburn Stream, or Bourne, hence St. Mary by the Bourne, then St. Mary Le Bourne, then St. Mary Le Bone, and then just Marylebone, or Marlebon, or whatever. Of course, when it comes down to it, the builders of these stations just wanted to give a geographically indicative name that wouldn't be confused with anything else. I doubt anyone thinks of the origins of their station's name as they step off the train, but between them they offer a lot of insight into the history of London. Well, I do hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, please do leave a like and consider subscribing for more. I would like to thank my donors on Ko-fi, on Patreon, and here on YouTube for your support. You are the new street to my insalubrious area. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio.